ceramic praying hands piece for their craft that year to take home. We all went to the ladies' ceramic shop, and believe it or not, nothing got broken. Young people are so willing to do things for the Lord. At another church in Illinois, the young people were in youth meeting, and I asked who would like to come up and help me do something, and nearly all the hands went up. And when I selected someone, I heard his neighbor say, Lucky, they all want to help and do something for the Lord. At this church, I played the piano and directed an adult choir. It was so good to hear them singing for the Lord. It was a Christmas cantata entitled Born a King. Every, every once in a while, he, we would have youth night and the kids were in charge of the evening services. The older boys preached and each one had something to do in the service. This was so good for them to serve the Lord in this way. We ministered to a church in Verona, Missouri, and again, it was my job to work with the youth. I remember we had worked up our Christmas cantata and there were 19 kids. And just before the service started that night, one of the choir members brought two of her little friends all dressed up to me and asked if they could sing with us. I said yes, even though they, I knew they didn't know the songs. They tried their best and what a joy it was for them. They were so proud. One of the ladies at the Church of Verona said to me, you're the best thing that ever happened to this church, but no, it isn't me, it's the Lord working through me. I'm just an instrument in his hands. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things in Christ which strengtheneth me. We need to give God the glory for his work. It was such a blessing being a minister's wife and working for the Lord as I had so many wonderful opportunities over the years. We were at our last place of service for 16 years. One of my highlights in addition to the youth there was calling on the sick and in the nursing home in Greenfield, Missouri. My husband preached for about 50 years and he got to where he couldn't concentrate and just couldn't get his sermons together. Later on, we learned he had Alzheimer's disease and had had several small strokes. A few years later, he went to the nursing home and was there for about a year and a half. I went over to see him every day and took him to church as long as he was able to go. At this time, I had taught piano lessons for about 15 years and I always went over to visit him as soon as I finished that day's lesson, about 6.30. Jean always wanted me, for me not to stay too long after dark and always said, you'd better go now. But this one night I went to visit him and he was standing in his room leaning over a small empty wastebasket, kind of working his hands as though he were fixing something. I knocked on the door so he'd know I was there and I said, what you doing, hon? And he said, oh, just tying up some loose ends. I didn't think much about it and when it was time for me to go home, I said, well, I'd better go now. And he said, Oh, I think you'd better stay on a couple of more hours. So I did stay for a while longer. And that was the only time he ever wanted me to stay later. But I didn't think much about it. When I did get up to go, I hugged him goodbye and told him I loved him and went out of the room, as always had before. For some reason, I started down the hall and just went two or three steps and I backed up to his room. And I said, remember, hon, I love you. Bye-bye. Still, I didn't think anything about it, even though I had never backed up to his room like that before. The very next day, as I was finishing my lessons, my piano lessons, a nurse from the nursing home called me and said that Jean had just passed away. And so I happened to my last two students that day were a mother and her daughter. The mother was such a comfort to me. I feel like the Lord had planned it that way. I couldn't finish their lessons, but she wanted me to stay until my she wanted to stay with me until my son came in. God was already taking care of me even now as a widow. This was a year and a half ago. God is so great and takes such good care of me every day. And at times like this, I don't see how people make it without the Lord in their lives. During this time, when Jean was ill, and, I, and for about a year later, I hadn't been very active in the church where I attend in Monette. And last November, the preacher challenged all the members to find a place of service and do something for the Lord. Well, I thought maybe some of the people would like to form a choir and do a Christmas cantata. 
So I prayed about it, and the next Sunday I asked if, in the church if they wanted to have a choir, and we'd meet down front after church. Well, about half the congregation came down, and we had 18 people. One of the elders who came to sing said to me, there won't be anybody left out there to hear us sing. And I said, let everyone bring someone with them, and several did. There was a good audience, and of course we know the Lord was there too. When God does something, he doesn't just do it halfway. There's a place for every worker in the vineyard of the Lord. Be it humble or exalted, may it be with one accord. I remember going out to visit Jason and Ada, my grandkids, when they ministered in Tennessee. I sat there in the front row at church while Jason was preaching and cried, wondering how anybody would not want to come to church and hear the word of God preached. But such was I one day a long time ago. And now I'm happy in Jesus. God is so good. I've learned so much over my lifetime as a Christian, but I don't know it all yet, and I never will in this life. One day we may sit at the master's, master teacher's feet and learn of him. I know now that it was Mark and Ansley's faithfulness and dedication and Christian witness that introduced me to the Lord. What a wonderful Christian ambassador the Lord had sent my way to show me how to live for Jesus and now how God has taught me many things through his word. When I look back on my life and how I was one to the Lord, it makes me all the more aware of how much we should witness for Christ and talk to the people about their own souls. Are we letting Jesus shine through our lives? What kind of an example are we to those around us? Others are watching. I got a letter last year from my granddaughter, Renee, who is married and has two little girls of her own. And she said, it was you who showed me who Jesus was. Just like Jesus, I always saw a genuine care and concern in your life for everyone. I watched you in prayer, in his word, at church, at home, with friends, with family. You were always the same. Many people taught me of Jesus, but you showed me. For that, I'll never thank you enough, but I know the Lord will. She closes and says, my greatest prayer now is that someday my granddaughter will see Jesus in me as I did in you. Thank you, Mima, all my love, Renee. Praise God for his unspeakable gift. God is so good. Did I mention that before? And it is so wonderful to be a child of his. I went to church at Cassville, Missouri a couple of weeks ago to witness, witness my son, Rick, baptize his daughter into Christ. What a special event. And afterwards, I had brought lunch and Rick and I ate at his house. We talked mostly about the baptism and the Bible. After lunch, Rick brought two Bibles to the table and we went from one verse to another, deciphering each verse as we went. After about an hour in the Word, I prepared, prepared to head home. As I got up from the table, I said, I just love to talk about the Bible. And Rick said, me too. Probably that was some of the best dessert we had ever had. I'd like to close with these encouraging scriptures from God's word that have meant a lot to me. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Mark 12, 30 and 31, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And there is none other scripture greater than these. There's none other commandment greater than these. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know,